The Psych Sessions podcast is brought to you by STP. That's the Society for the Teaching of Psychology, APA Division II, also known as our Teaching Tribe. Join STP's Facebook page, Twitter account, or Psych Teacher Listserv. Visit teachpsych.org and click on the News Blog tab for more information. These are great resources. The July 2020 issue of Teaching of Psychology contains a series of articles celebrating STP's 75th anniversary. STP members receive print copies and online access to this journal. Eric and I want to encourage you to become a member of STP for only $25 a year. Please visit teachpsych.org for more information. Hello, and welcome to Psych Sessions, conversations about teaching and stuff. I'm Eric Landrum, along with Garth Neufeld, your podcast hosts. As the name implies, we center on conversations about teaching, but we often veer into interesting topics, which is the end stuff. This is episode number 95, where Garth had the opportunity to interview folks from UTOPS, the Utah Teachers of Psychology in Secondary Schools including Kristen Whitlock from Davis High School in Kaysville, Utah, Pam Coburn from Fremont High School in Plain City, Utah, Annette Nielsen from Woods Cross High School in Woods Cross, Utah, and Bob Hill and Irv Altman, both from the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, before you hear the interview, please allow me to share some listening tips and some of my favorite moments. And here, I want to give a shout out before I begin to Garth, because it's not an easy feat to uh, do an interview with six people and four microphones. So I think he really did a nice job. And so um, good on him. So um, I really enjoyed listening to this interview because um, you get to hear a group of passionate educators talk about um, their commitment to this grassroots organization that um, many of them have been a part of for over 20 years. And so whether the the founders or the current leaders of this organization, it was really delightful. I think they, if I remember, they had gathered together probably the day before their 2019 UTOPS conference uh, late in the calendar year. And um, that's when this was recorded. And so they were kind of reminiscing about the past, how it got founded, the and so uh, it was delightful to kind of be the fly on the wall and listen to their conversation. Um, so, for example, Irv Altman, his participation in this through the Board of Educational Affairs, um, he had done some national work with TOPS that actually predated uh, Charles Brewer's um, participation, which you you know from Charles Brewer's background, that means that Irv Altman was really an early contributor to the uh, secondary school's teaching of psychology efforts. Um, I really appreciated their perspective, especially the um, college professors and appreciating the contributions of the high school teachers of psychology because they recognized a couple of things. They recognized that the high school teachers were generalists and they also recognized the value of that ability to be generalists because they could see the big, broad field of psychology and they appreciated that that skill set and being able to communicate that to uh, high school students. And so um, that's not always seen by our colleagues in community colleges and in uh, four-year colleges and universities. And so I appreciated that part of the conversation very much. Um, you can tell that there's a camaraderie of spirit, a strong sense of community and belongingness. Um, on, on a couple times throughout their conversation, they talk about that um, the UTOPS conference day is the best day of the year, and they really look forward to it. And I think Kristen told a story uh, during the uh, during the podcast about how one year a teacher had shown up and they didn't have books in the classroom, they didn't have psychology textbooks, and um, they put out a quick call and they got that taken care of in a few days after the conference. And so you can just tell the pride and the, the, the spirit of community that, that they have in the best possible way that they take care of each other. So I really appreciated that. Um, the other part that you can tell about um, spirit and community is that they have stories to tell. 
you know, they've been together for 20 plus years. And so when they get back together, like families often do, uh, they tell stories about previous conferences, previous events, whether it's a story that Kristen tells about her 2006 experience. And I'm actually not going to give any more of it away. I want you to listen to their their interview, their conversation, uh, or um, other stories that they share about specific conferences and experience that they've had. Because when we get together with our loved ones, that's what we do. We tell stories about a childhood or, you know, that story that gets retold every time, you know, we get together with our parents or our grandparents, you know, the stories that we tell in our families. You can tell that these folks are family because they have those stories to tell. In any case, um, I really appreciated uh, not only listening to these folks talk about UTOPS, but also that um, they take pride in providing these regional experiences that many of these, I, I would assume that many of these high school teachers of psychology would never have the chance to maybe travel to, in this region, a Rocky Mountain Psychological Association or a Western Psychological Association or an APA or an APS. And so they're really providing invaluable professional development. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Enjoy. Well, this is a pretty special episode. I have just flown into Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am sitting with uh, a bunch of um, pretty famous teachers in the UTOPS world. And uh, we are going to do a little... Uh, Psych Sessions episode today about the history of this great organization, which is UTOPS, which is Utah Teachers of Psychology in Secondary Schools. And uh, joining me are a bunch of great teachers. And one of my favorites, Kristen Whitlock, is here with me. And I'm going to ask you, Kristen, to uh, kind of co-interview with me, if that's okay with you. I'm happy to. Well, happy well to. and welcome back. It's been a few episodes since you've been here. So um, Glad to be back. <laughs> it's good to have you. Um, we are with. Uh, let's start with. Let's start with the expected folks. The um, so Pat, Pam Coburn is here, and uh, Annette Nielsen is here, and I know these two friends from the AP Reading. Um, we've been doing that together, and they've been doing it a lot longer than I have. Um, and then we have Bob Hill, and we'll we'll get their backstories of these folks in a moment. But we've got Bob Hill here, and then we have. Hold on, hold on, Irv Altman. Irv Altman, we are sitting in your home, so thank you so much for having us. It's a and, pleasure. And uh, Irv, maybe we could just start with you because, uh, yeah, because why not? Can you tell me a little bit about what has your, where did you work? You're retired now. Uh, what does your career look like? Maybe you can just take a minute and tell us a little bit about your, your career, like even outside of UTOPS. Who, who are you? Well, uh, my wife and I grew up in New York City. We married. We lived in the D.C. area. Uh, I received an invitation to visit Utah as possible chair of psychology. I didn't know where Utah was. I asked him if it was near Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and we came here. Uh, my wife claimed she cried her way across the country. I promised her that she and the two boys would just had a lot of fun for a couple of years, and we'd leave. We're here 50 years. The university has been my home since then, and I've had a lot of positions, uh, chair of psychology, dean of the College of Social and Behavioral Science. I was vice president for academic affairs, uh, and then I was promoted to professor after all those administrative jobs. Uh, my re research is in social psychology on interpersonal relationships, and I became heavily involved in helping establish a new field of environmental psychology in the 70s. And uh, it's been great fun. And one of the major joys of my life was to be involved with high school teachers. And actually, if I can go on another minute or two, I happen to be on the Board of Educational Affairs of, uh, of American Psychological Association in the late 80s and early 90s, where the board was reorganizing. Uh, having been involved in graduate affairs so long, I became bored and pushed for more concern with undergraduate education and teaching of psychology in high schools. And the latter became so much fun for me and so important to the field that when I was on the BEA, there were a couple of high school teachers uh, at the last meeting, and I was trying to push for getting 
more active involvement and I needed a budget to bring in a whole bunch of teachers to do planning in the next year and they said no you can't do that because the budget p- process is closed and I managed to take one young teacher and I don't remember her name she was a dynamo and we broke into the board of directors of APA <laughs> and talked to them for about a half hour and they established a budget for us to bring in teachers the following year to plan all this. That next year, <clears throat> I worked with people like uh, uh, Charlie Blair Broker, Randy Ernst, uh, uh, I can't remember, Jane Hallinan, mm-hmm. uh, and we spent days in, in D.C. putting stuff on the boards about what kind of things we would do, and we came up with ideas of establishing clear hours for teachers at the annual convention. We came up with a strategy for developing curriculum uh, and trying to figure out ways to help local state teacher organizations get going, and that became the charter. And that was just very exciting. And that's how I met. Somebody told me, well, the person in Utah is Kristen Whitlock. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so then I changed my focus from national to local and worked with Kristen and Bob Hill got in, involved and we started having uh, national meetings where our psych department agreed to pro- work on programs, getting speakers. Bob Hill's ed psych department took over the administrative management, secretaries, uh, local arrangements, and we did that for years. And it was an enormous experience. What year is that, uh, Irv, that this, this stuff is happening? Well, it was in the late 80s, and I just had this plaque that APA gave me uh, to be tops. I was tops liaison, first tops li- liaison, 1992-93, but we'd done a lot of the planning for two or three years earlier. And then following me, Charles Brewer. When I left BEA, Charles Brewer became the tops liaison at APA. Wow. And so you said 82? 92. 92. 92. Mm-hmm. 92. Yeah, 92. Um, well, you know, you're going to be, I think you'll be happy or surprised, I don't know, to hear that uh, some guests that we've had on this uh, podcast, other than Kristen Whitlock, have been uh, Charlie Blair Broker. Uh, we've had Randy Ernst. And we, uh, last year or two years ago, we got to go to see Charles Brewer and get him on the podcast and interview right. him which was really special. Um, and so I, you know, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get back to all this history and I, I just kind of want to leave it right there. So we've got the backstory of maybe how tops got started at the APA level. And then we'll talk about the, the next, you know, 25 years or whatever it is. <laughs> um, but I want to, uh, just go back around the table and, uh, Bob, could you just tell us a little bit, you can just grab the mic from Kristen there. Uh, we're sharing four mics between six people. So, um, uh, Bob, what was your introduction into this this group? And actually, maybe you can tell us um, what did what were you doing around that time, and what are you, what are you doing now professionally? Uh, and just give us a, a minute or two about who you are. Sure, I'm happy to do that. Well, um, I like Irv, am very enthusiastic about t- um, teachers of psychology in the secondary schools. When I got introduced to it, I was the chair of the Department of Educational Psychology, like Irv is mentioning. And so I was overseeing the, the training of teachers at the University of Utah. We weren't teaching a lot of undergraduate courses, but we were training teachers. And so we were getting to see firsthand teachers who were, I guess, for the first time and very interested in issues about psychology. And, you know, in my mind, I think teachers are some of the most insightful and bright thinkers uh, on the planet. And one of the things I've always liked about teachers is they have the propensity to come up with really creative, out-of-the-box ideas. Uh, Just a couple of examples, like, for example, using fruit and raisins to image a brain. Um, um, Employing a can opener to conduct a neuropsych exam. And, you know, some of the best self-help podcasts, I think, on YouTube 
our teacher podcast. So when I'm looking for podcasts in my, with my clients, I always go after the teacher podcast because they're some of the best choreographed and greatest uh, podcasts that I can think of. I, I was very interested in TOPS because we wanted our department to stay connected with the teachers and to also, we just enjoyed you know, working together. So that's how I was involved. Uh, currently, uh, I've since left the University of Utah, retired, uh, sort of from the academic world, and now I'm uh, actually seeing clients as a private therapist or as a psychotherapist. I have about 40 clients in my caseload, and one of the things I've been doing is trying to understand people's problems, people's issues from a real point of view, not an academic ivory tower way, but really talking to people and listening to them and deal with their struggles. And so now uh, TOPS is introducing itself again to me, and I'm looking forward perhaps to do some more interacting. I'm not a Utah native, I'm a California native, but most of my years have been spent in Utah where I'm married, have grandkids, uh, and uh, we all really enjoy the mountains and, and enjoy being here. So that's a little bit about me. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, Kristen, it's nice to see you again. And it's so cool that you were able to, I, on short notice, to pull all these people together. Amazing. Yeah. I did not think. I just, when I knew you were coming for, for UTOPS and you mentioned that you might, because Garth is our keynote this year at 2019 UTOPS, and I knew you were coming and you mentioned maybe doing something like this. I thought I couldn't talk about the history of UTOPS without, you know, Bob Hill and Irv Altman, because it would not have been a reality without their support, because it was Irv who originally contacted me, because he had the, the national connection, and he called me and said, you know, would you be interested in, in getting something going in the state of Utah? And I had been at Ludi Benjamin's um, month-long conference institute at Texas A&M where he gave us the charge that we were supposed to go back to our states and do something. And I just didn't know what to do. It's like, how does one person get anything done, right? But when Irv contacted me, it was like the perfect like opportunity you know, to be able to create a collaborative relationship with the university and make something happen, like I promised uh, Ludi Benjamin that I would do. You know what's interesting about that? I remember in our in first interview, you told me this whole story, uh, but now I'm in the room with the people you were telling me about, and it's right. all coming back to me. And I should say, um, the person who gave me the idea to bring all the equipment out so that we could do this is Rob McIntarfer, who said... <laughs> There is a, he said, UTOPS has a great story. You've got to bring your equipment out there. And he's been one of our great supporters, by the way. He came pretty early. Well, he's been and, twice. and I should mention one person that I forgot that we have interviewed as well that you mentioned is Jane Hallinan. But she gets mentioned on pretty much every episode, so I don't feel well, that bad, Jane. Be. Right. Yeah, I guess she should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kristen, we, I'm, we're going to hear from you again, right. but uh, I'm going to move it on to, uh, along to uh, Annette. Uh, so, Annette, uh, how did you come to this group uh, when you first came to this group, I guess? Well, um, it's actually a big part of my teaching story that I've told uh, quite a few times. I t when I initially got hired for my job, I teach at Woods Cross High School here. It's in Davis District, which is the same district as Kristen and Pam. I taught math for two years, straight math. And then the third year of my teaching, I um, was... Uh, the, the teacher who taught psychology was retiring, and I really pushed with my administration to teach psychology because that's what I wanted to teach. That was my love. And, um, and so I, I was given the position, and that spring of 99, I went to his classroom to kind of you know, see what I was going to be doing, and he was walking me through. I was also taking over for student government and a bunch of the responsibilities that he had. And he said, by the way, I have one piece of advice for you. He said, you need to get in contact with Kristen Whitlock and <laughs> Pam Coburn. They have just recently put together this group, and they have an annual conference, and they're meeting next year, and whatever you do, you need to contact these two women, and you need to go to this conference. 
And I did. In fact, I think I emailed Kristen like the next day. He was very emphatic about it. And they have become my mentors and my dear friends. And I wouldn't be where I am right now without them. So, How long have you, uh, how, how long did it take you to kind of get into the leadership rung of doing like UTOPS and contributing more than just attending? Kristen could probably speak better to that. Oh, I nab anybody that comes around that's got some potential. <laughs> so within right. our yeah. district, yeah. we yeah. also had like a group, right. like a we, we call it a PLC or a professional learning community. So the teachers of Davis District would get together once a month. And we started meeting in those meetings before the first UTOPS that I attended. And by the way, I've only ever missed two. One was the year I had my child, and it was when Jane Hallinan was presenting, which was really, really sad. And, uh, and I had given birth like a week before she came. Um, and the other was a year that I was out of town on test development, and it was when Sue France was here. And I've never gotten over that, and I don't think I ever will. But, um, <laughs> but the, you know, from the very beginning, as we started working together as a cohort, it was sort of like, you know, as we became close and we became friends, it was just like, what can I do to help? And how can I pitch in? And what can we do? I mean, but Kristen really runs the show. We all do a very tiny bit, but she does everything to put this together well um, so. well pam is silently clapping here so we should probably hear <laughs> from her uh you want to sing praises to Kristen? Oh, um. let's do <laughs> if i had a decent voice i would surely do this but in favor of your kind ears we won't do that okay well tell tell me about utops and your history with utops then it, it, Kristen and I did a workshop slash uh utah educational association gig way back when the exam was so very new. And we had posters that I saved that I can poster on my retirement walls that I can show. And it went so well. There were so many people there that we got so much encouragement. And then there was that one fellow. There was that one fellow <laughs> that didn't really sort of tell you to do this but challenged that you would do a nice job and represent well what we were doing. And I'm going to blame Irv Altman on that one. Oh, yes, right. don't give me that look. You know it was you. And as we walked away from this, we started with things that sounded like a week long. I'd been in um, Houston, Texas for the month long. Kristen had been at MIT, and we had had wealth of experience of things to do and thought, you know, we can do that as well as anyone else, and then realized, oh, no we can't do that that's crackers and realized that what would be more useful on a regular basis was meeting with the teachers getting some sort of a word out to the rest of the folks to be able to let them know they were not in that alone traditionally in some of the schools when they started it's a case of one teacher in the building that teaches the AP class and he or she is just Hopefully something's left in the drawer or in the book or the whatever else. And we decided that was not exactly the best way. We needed to help people and lean out and be a constant. So we've got a list serve and we've got some help. And the new kidders that are co- uh, the new teachers that are coming in now are not on their own. And it's Irv's fault. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, working with high school teachers in many ways was far more rewarding than working with faculty at the university. Uh, And in fact, when I was chair, getting people to teach introductory psychology was a real problem because most people, most of us have become so specialized Mm. that we no longer have the breadth of the field that we had as graduate students. People resisted teaching introductory psychology. We had a move to Uh, team teaching. Everybody would teach in their own area. But when I see what high school teachers do, you are master teachers. You know more about the field as a whole than 99% of the faculty. Did it always uh, bother you or rub you the wrong way uh, to do that team teaching model? Or was it just after you saw what high school teachers can pull off? No, it was something that had been underway and we almost had to do it more and more out of the inability of ordinary faculty to be willing to teach introductory. It's like they all want to take seminars or advanced 
upper division classes. So a lot of it was because it had to be done in order to get the students to get the right experience. But to see high school teachers able to to deal with the spectrum of the field in a substantial and, as Bob put it, a creative, imaginative way, and to come together and support one another was amazing to me, and it was very rewarding to see. Um, and by the way, I want everybody to feel free to jump in and ask questions. I just have a million questions. So, um, so when you were ba- back at APA and uh, when you are advocating for this kind of new path forward for high school teachers, which and did this eventually become? Was tops did tops already exist at this point? Well, I think there w- there was a a, a kind of uh, a, a attachment of high school to the board of educational affairs. But it was not that formal, if I recall. Uh, it, it was pretty informal. It was not even organized. And that's why we were able to get teachers together and spend time planning what the goals of TOPS would be, giving, getting TOPS to have own convention time to, to work on curriculum and other, other projects like that. Before that, there was attention to high school, but it was rather secondary. Psychology was so busy with graduate education uh, that sure. high school was, it was nice, nice people, but pretty marginal. But, and the energy was there in, in people like Randy Ernst and Charlie Blair Broker and Jane. But but there wasn't and ta- and BEA Board of Education was, was reorganizing at the time, so it was a great opportunity to strike, and they couldn't resist. So they, did Tops come out of that season? Then is that right? Th- right. There may yeah, have been a thing called Tops, but it, well, I don't remember. Right, because Tops started in ninety two. Okay, so, so right that's when it was ninety two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. in ninety two. Yeah. On behalf of psychology teachers, thank you for all of that. This is really a cool story for it's, it's someone really like me. It's really true, and thank you. Thank I you mean, very you much. You educated a lot of us. Well, I just <laughs> really appreciate how it. The field could be taught. Well, l- let me ask you. Um, and with at that time, what what is there within you? You're you're at a university. You've got a career going. You've had some success. You're at APA already. Why do you feel the need to cross the line into the high school teaching world? And um, and and give whatever whatever uh, and maybe they didn't need help. I don't want to make it sound like they needed they help did. or something like they, that. But they did maybe they help. did need help. Yeah. Why why did you want to do that? Well, I had spent a lot of my career and at a major university. You really focus on graduate education, even undergraduates. You do a responsible job, but your career is based upon graduate education graduate students, research, grants. I mean, big universities are big, like big corporations. You got to deliver and you got to deliver money and you got to deliver publications and you got to deliver graduate students because they go out and they then are your lifeline in the future. You're responsible to undergraduates, but there's no attention to high school. And I had seen a lot of attention given to graduate programs. We ran a big graduate conference here in 1987 of, a, of 100 people. And we had him here. We brought him, I bid for that, and we got it. Uh, and we ran that for days, and a book came out. And so I said, okay, that's taken care of. Now what are we going to do? And here was high school. Our field has a lot to say to human beings <laughs> who may not ever have any exposure to what we do. They go into engineering or law or business or whatever. And so I said, this, this is the future of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the field. It's the future of people. I also had a major commitment to increasing diversity at the university. And high schools also have a high percentage of, of at the time, uh, ethnic people who didn't go further. And so that was another motive. It was part of my other strategy of, of getting this university more diversified. And uh, so that was my interest. <laughs> well, and I think, too, this is Bob, uh, the concept of teaching psychology in high school uh, is one that people don't think about. They think, well, okay, the first time someone's exposed 
to psychology curriculum is their Psych 101 course as an undergraduate student. But the fact of the matter is that there's so much exposure to the principles of psychology well, at all stages of life, but a pic- particularly in high school where you're discovering other people, discovering yourself, and you're experiencing subject matter as part of living and getting along and discovering who you are. And so, so really, psychology is embedded in the high school experience. The problem I saw when I was a department chair is you know, trying to get faculty to uh, sort of get excited about you know, teaching survey courses. I think faculty have sort of what the, is the you know, diagnostic uh, category of survey class phobia. And I mean, they're, 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 they're reluctant to teach something that has such breadth. And right. um, they immediately want to go into something that has depth. And so when they're starting a survey course, they'll, they'll push through for a little while. Then they'll get to their favorite subject. And it's just like you go over a ledge and you go straight down. But the rest of the course doesn't get covered. The other thing is, is that professors, by and large, and I'm not going to say this too strongly, feel a little entitled you know, I'm, you know, the expert, I'm the world-class scholar. And that often puts a big distance between the student and the teacher. And in high school, you didn't see that. You know, teachers were all about learning, all about discovery, all about getting in there and being with the kids. I I think the, the, you know, this concept of efficient teaching, which I think, you know, was is pervasive in higher education is that how can I use the least amount of time to teach the most amount of material? You know, the, the, the famous notion is that, you know, the two questions are, you know, um, uh, professor, uh, would you please slow down? And then number two is, uh, professor, will this be on the test? And, but teachers, you know, of, of psychology seem to have a way of learning how or making a priority of how does this stuff apply to your life and i think the the podcast the 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 youtube videos about you know how do you deal with a fear of bees you know and i you know you get on the web page for that and if it's a teacher doing it you know she's probably or he's probably actually afraid of bees and then has a curriculum set up and it's immediately interesting so that's what got me excited about the teachers uh, it, it, they, they presented a new venue for covering material that, you know, in higher education we know well and regard well. They presented a new venue and a new point of view. You know, it's interesting that you're both talking about something s- similar, which is I wonder if uh, folks who are so specialized in psychology in a particular area of psychology, if high school teachers – even though they're not specialists in the area, uh, in any particular area of psychology, that they uh, are, it's easier for them to take that step back and see the impact of psychology because they're not so ingrained in in right. whatever that one chapter is that you right. might cover in intro psych. And it's what's interesting for me to hear both of you talk about is that these are the conversations that we're having today. Now you are all. Actually, I won't say you're ahead. We're way behind here because we're having these conversations today about why psychology is meaningful to students, why we should get back to that being the number one thing that we have to offer is that psychology can have a positive effect in students' lives. And, um, and so we're still, we're still in some ways fighting that battle, but it's so f- interesting to me that you're talking about kind of having that insight or, or picking that up in high school teachers that they, they knew that, you know, 30 years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Almost 30 Although years I, ago. I also, not quite. Don't make us that we'll old, say 30. Don't make I, around also, it. I also suspect that <clears throat> high school teachers know their students personally more than faculty and especially 101 in a traditional university like ours 101 is three, 400 students in the class. So the faculty don't know the people. You, you get to know them, I think, on a longer basis. And so they're real people, 
and and you understand where almost each one of them is in terms of their their thinking, their way of thinking, their their issues that they may be facing personally, and so on. Uh, but you have to look at a university, a major university, the survival and success of a faculty person in a field like psychology is no different than it is in chemistry, biology, or engineering. They've got to produce research in their field, and they've got to produce grant money. And if they don't, it's going to be a tough haul. You know, I want to say, too, that, you know, this is a reciprocal relationship because in the high school, you know, one of the things we don't have is, like, what's cutting edge, right? And when we think about Mm -hmm. the materials that we have or the textbooks that we're using, I mean, even now I'm using a textbook that's 2009, Uh right? If I want to know what's really happening in a particular field, that's what's happening at the university level. And so it's a really, it's a lovely collaborative relationship because in terms of like UTOPS, we've always had presenters coming to us from the college level to present on their specialty, right. on their research. And so our, you know, our high school teachers were learning about positive psychology and neuroscience and we were touring labs at the University of Utah and it just helped our high school teachers see and get a better perspective about what's happening at the college level and to be able to take knowledge from these experts back to our students beyond what they're getting in their textbook. And that's so valuable because it gives you those stories and those little things that you can add into, you know, to your lessons and, and your lectures that can ignite interest in students that go beyond just, you know, just the textbook. Or Let me ask there. you a question, Kristen. Have you ever brought high school classes to a lab at the University of Utah for a particular faculty? It seems to me that would be a wonderful thing. Well, you know, a number of years ago, the University of Utah had a high school psychology day. That's right. And so if you remember that. that, I forgot that. Right. Yes. So uh, we would yeah. bring students. I know Pam and I both brought students, and Ed did too. We used to share a bus, didn't we? And we take our students up there, and they would tour many of the different labs yeah, right. and have a I chance to meet that. with professors. Yeah. And kids loved it. I was so sad when the – I'm not sure why the program ended or what happened there, but that was so valuable to put high school kids on campus. Yes, I remember And allow that, them yeah. to yeah. experience what that is like and to, and to be in a college lecture. You ought to rev so, that up again. We should. We need no to talk to somebody. To. It was really great because it was at the end of the year after the AP exam. So the kids had just taken the exam and they could now go and see, you know, how college would be if they, you know, were going to pursue a degree in psychology. It was always a really exciting day. It was sad when that, this is a, for whatever uh, reason, This dissipated. is not relevant to this, but Bert Uccino is the chair of psychology. He's a wonderful man. He's wonderful. Rev it up again. And tell him that I told you to reach him, that I wanted him to talk to you. (laughs) I will see. That's exactly, yeah, Pam, you're right. That's exactly what Irv does to us. He he gets the ideas and and makes the connections and brings us on board. One of those um, trips or all the way on the bus in town and my school at that particular point was about 35 miles away. A young woman went in with us to look at this and yeah, okay, the exam is over and I'm going to graduate. And she was ready to blow the whole thing off, but not willing to go to class that day. After the trip to the university, looking at the labs, looking at some of the, I guess it was one of the um, rodent labs and what the actual thing was, turned her around completely Hmm. and we ended up with more university of utah interest students some of them actually applied went in started with psychology and went various directions but that particular kind of an experience of the connection between the two was pivotal for some of the kidders that's great so one of the reasons we wanted to do this uh have this conversation is because there are only a handful, maybe Utah, UTOPS is the most successful at this point, uh, or one of the, the most successful groups of um, and ongoing annual uh, meetings of high school teachers. Now, there is like Chicago has one in Iowa and Wisconsin, and I don't know where, who else has big show. Like, oh, KTOPS, Kansas has been a while. They've kind of gone, gone away, come back, you know, so they're, yep. they're kind of going and. 
but it. when you look even on the on the top's website, if you look at the United States and you look for all those stars on that map, you know what I'm talking about of where there are um, like groups of high school teachers meeting uh, once a year or something like that. It's pretty sparse, and the groups that are meeting, uh, it's not necessarily successful like UTOPS has been successful. Um, and maybe I'll throw this out to the table um, for other people to listen. What makes UTOPS? UTOPS is now in its 21st first year. 21st. And you have, tomorrow you said you have about 70 people showing up tomorrow? Yeah, we've got 70 people tomorrow. We started with 13. Right. Yeah. So what is it that has made UTOPS uh, successful over these years and what, what contributes to its longevity? Can I do it? Do it. Do um, it. So Kristen talked about how there was a reciprocal, um, you know, component for teachers to be able to learn from the university. But a huge piece of it is we are, as Pam said, often the only person in our building teaching what we teach. We don't mm-hmm. have opportunities to meet on a weekly basis mm-hmm. with other psychology teachers. And if you're like we are, we're lucky we have a district where we can meet once a month. But to have a day where you are with all the other psychology teachers in the state, learning from experts. I mean, this is what this is the professional development that we psychology teachers look forward to every year. Second is the reading, if you participate in the reading. Mm. But in terms of your professional development and what you can do as a psychology teacher to become better, to learn the field better, to go back to your classroom and improve, there's nothing better than this day. And you'll find that. It's just like a breath of fresh air. It doesn't feel like I'm taking a day off to do professional development. I'm taking a day off to be with my people and <laughs> to ha- right. and to learn so much. It's very energizing. I always go back the next week feeling totally energized. Another one of the things that I think has made it successful is the experience in it being exposed to the professors and some of the other experts that have come in to help, then the folks that go forth and go back to their areas, their districts, their schools, say, I learned this, I picked this up, this is something. Next year, you need to come with us. A few years ago, we had a, a young person that was starting in a new building that was kind of uh, a, a pickup from some program that was not as successful and was without books. We put out the word that there was an absence of books for this particular teacher. We needed a collection of, and then we gave the name. Within a week, that teacher was supplied with. They weren't brand new, but they were the books that were needed. So I think that we can take credit for the professors, for the folks that we deal with, but also the folks that attend this particular thing. They spread it, and they do some of the same things. So this year, when we hand out the certificates, which will give them credit for professional development, there, I typed up 70 of them this afternoon, and they're probably going to get larger. I don't know if we keep it like this way. Well, I also to say that I, I think that there's a really dedicated core of mm-hmm. teachers that have caught on to the vision of what UTOPS can be. And catching their enthusiasm and the love they have for their subject and for their students and being willing to give their time and be willing to do the things necessary to make this work. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's the people that, you know, these teachers that care about this that have made this successful for so long. You know, it's not just one person. This is a, a collaboration we have for us, high school teachers, our university partners. You know, we were with the University of Utah for a long time until 2013. And recently, you know, uh, with the help of Dr. Jen Simons, who's now moved from Westminster, she brought us into a new home. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's dedicated people in many different institutions across the whole academic spectrum from high school through the university that that feel that this is worthwhile. And this is the first step in the pipeline, right? If we can help these high school kids first, they're going to come to the colleges and universities and hopefully find their home in psychology or just better their, their lives in general. Yeah. I have a question for the for you the the three of you in terms of um, the ev- evolution of tops. How do you think the online format or the online um, technology impacted tops and its expansion or its growth? Probably just in getting the word out more easily because when we started, 
Um, I just remember contacting like the Utah State Board of Education to get the list of psychology teachers in the state. And we spent time trying to contact every high school at that time in the state and then creating letters and, and stuffing envelopes and sending letters out and just trying to find who's out there because that was the hardest part was just trying to figure out who's teaching psychology. So I think the technology has made it easier. You know, we've got our, we now have a site on the Westminster uh, webpage for, for UTOPS that people can visit. We've got, we still have an old email listserv that we send information out and contact. So we've got our own little Utah community where teachers can ask questions and talk to each other and so on. So I think in that way it's helped us maintain contact and in some ways um, helped with the growth. Mm. And I'm just thinking about something, and that is that I know that UTOPS is, uh, it's, it's Utah regional, right? But if you are a person uh, and you're hearing this and you're a high school teacher and you don't have anything like this in your area, come out to UTOPS. I, I run Tip Northwest in Seattle. People fly in for Tip Northwest, usually people with professional development money. It's like college instructors and stuff. But this is well worth your investment to come in for a, like a full day of professional development that's relevant. So if, you don't, if you're a high school teacher or a college teacher and you don't have something in your area, they're welcome here, right? Oh, absolutely. And we've had, uh, we've had folks. We've had people come from Wyoming and California and so on. Arizona. And they are, Arizona, yeah, more than welcome. You know, more the merrier, you know, because we're trying to get out the good news to everybody. I have a question nationally. Is APA, BEA supporting? Is, are there tops, are there teachers on BEA now? Or is there a tops liaison? Yes. Oh yeah, we've got we do there is a there is a, a high school teacher that uh will you know represent, you know, on on BA and the chair of tops also is, you know, comes to the, you know, the the consolidated meetings to talk about what's happening in tops to the larger Good. BA group and so on. It. And I would say in general that, you know, BEA has been so supportive Great. of TOPS. And just in the past, you know, two years ago, you know, we had the huge high school summit at Weber State University just focusing on the teaching of high school psychology that brought in, you know, 70 people from both high school, college from all over the country just to talk about high school psychology. So I think we've we've had a lot Great. of support and... I think TOPS also nice. supports the yeah the regional networks. You know the grants that that we started with are still in existence. So if you're thinking about that you want to start an organization like UTOPS in your own area, please go to the TOPS webpage. There's not only an, an opportunity for you to get some um, funding to help you start, but there's also as that came out of the summit a whole guide on how to actually do this. You know, what are the, the problems that you might encounter? How can you get started? Who should you contact? So you shouldn't be afraid of, of trying this, you know. And I, I remember very early on, you know, talking to Irv, and I'm not sure if Irv remembers this, but it's actually become really kind of a little mantra for myself. Is like, you know, I'd be saying, oh, should I, should I ask? Should I do this? And so on. But what's the worst anybody can ever say is just no. You know, so why not ask? And that's really become a part of kind of ingrained in me. Is just okay to just try. You never know what the potential might be until you get it going. Just try. So I am hearing, uh, I I'm hearing that one of the things that makes UTOPS really strong is, first of all, I see multiple generations at this table of teachers, right? Where like where mentors have mentored and men have mentored folks, and then those folks have been become mentors to others. And you're always looking for the talent, like you said, right? Uh, maybe you didn't say talent, but you're always looking for that person who you can hand this thing off to next. Who is the person with the energy? It's really neat to see this around the table, and I'm sure that there is a whole another generation or two who uh, could be at this table, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and and so as you all. Um, uh, Bob and Irv, as you look at what UTOPS has become, um, could you have imagined this or what do you think about it now 25, 20 some years later? Well, I'm, I, I think what you all have done is spectacular. For me, it was almost a delusion at the beginning. And I've had a lot of delusions like this. <laughs> Start things, move, it, move in a direction, who knows what will happen. Dream like that's why I asked the question is there support? Well, 
I would not have been surprised if Kristen had said there is no support because a lot of new ventures often fade. That's true in the university. Uh, it's true everywhere, I think. So I'm asking the question because to me, way, way back, there was a delusion that APA would support with funding, with continued representation, uh, and, and, would, and would move along, and that's what's happened. So I, you have to have delusions. I call them delusions. Well, and like as you're pointing out, Irv, um, you know, st starting a movement or starting an initiative like TOPS is sort of like starting a new business, you know, and, you know, the failure rate, I don't know what I remember the failure rate of new businesses are, but maybe one in 30 uh, businesses succeed. And the same is true with APA. I've, I've been in APA for, you know, four decades, and I've seen lots of initiatives and I've seen lots of enthusiasm, and I've seen most of them not go anywhere. But TOPS uh, has. And I was sitting here writing down some notes trying to think, okay, what is it that made TOPS uh, have such staying power? And one I'm positive is a committed core group. A committed core group. That's right. And then within that core group, I would say sort of inspired teacher leaders. That's two, maybe three uh, teacher leaders. The third is a real purpose. If you, know, you need to be able to define for yourself what is your purpose or what is the real need. And then, of course, where psychology really makes it work is an infectious subject matter that's got all kinds of in, inspirational, enthusiastic presentation opportunities. I mean, that's harder. It's harder, like, say, for physics or, um, you know, chemistry. You know, psychology just has a lot of really fun stuff. And I think where, you know, Irv's mentioned this, and I, I do give a lot of credit to Irv for this, and that is a concrete and developmental plan. And I think where a lot of uh, initiatives go south is they've got great ideas and they've got the people, but they don't have a plan. And I think that's at the, and that developmental plan is probably what kept uh, the university professors, the university personnel, uh, leaders connected to the public school teachers. Yeah. And uh, you know, Kristen can probably get into some of the details of that, but well, I think part, that's critical. I mean, to extend what Bob is saying, you're really talking about part of the, the process is institutionalization, fixing it into almost a bureaucracy. Bob did that in Ed Psych. He created basically a bureaucracy, somebody whose job was to do thus and so. And that's the kind of mo model I followed in other things. We, we, we established the Martin Luther King holiday celebration at the university the day before it became a national holiday. And what I did was create a budget line, a permanent budget. I laundered money from somewhere I don't even know. <laughs> and I laundered it in and put it as a line. And people don't often remove lines. And that institutionalized it in the same way that Bob institutionalized a management structure. Well, I would say, when you talk about the institutions, I would say <laughs> That's that... That's fun. You know, <laughs> that, you know, I think Utah's for the, for the teachers in Utah that are familiar and know it, it really has become like a destination. I mean, it is what they, what they look forward to. Yeah. It's what we talk about as being the best day of the year. And, you know, it really does feel like you're just getting back together with your friends and... As I've looked at the list of these 70 people coming, I'm so excited because we have a whole bunch of new people. When you talk about the new generation, we've got all these brand new teachers, and it's like, wow, a whole new opportunity unfolds you know, tomorrow with bringing these folks in and finding out what they need and getting them excited about the potential of what, what teaching psychology can be at the high school level. So it's a very exciting time for us, you know, and we continue to think about good things to come. Do you, you know? team up these new teachers with mentors? Think about that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's a great, I, I mean. I think that sort of happens organically okay. as part of the network, you know, that I we see. create. We have, you know, strong, connected people, but nobody's like, we're a group 
that's just going to stay together mm-hmm. and you're the newbie. You're giving it's it away like, all yes, the time. Yes, there are new people. Come on in. What can we give you? What can we help you with? What do you have that I can learn from? Because I'm old and <laughs> I need some new ideas. Just knowing you all, it would be very difficult to come into UTOPS for a day, even if I was a new teacher and not get caught up in it. Uh, and so you do, it is something about who you are as people as well, just knowing you all. Um, and and I think that's probably some of the magic of it. And I know you guys were all pointing to Kristen before that she's she's really, uh, I think, the backbone of UTOPS right now and has been for a long time. And, um, and so I think when you, with people like you all, um, it's, it's, it's hard for this thing not to go right or for people not to feel like they belong here. Um, and, and so I'm, I can't wait to see it tomorrow. Um, so who was, who were, who at this table, the, the first year of UTOPS, were you all there? I don't remember. Yeah. Second year. Yeah. Jeff was there. Yeah. So, So out of the 13 and how many of those folks do you think are still there? Are anybody else that we're missing? Wow. Well, you know, we've, we've started to face retirement, you yep. know, that yep. our first wave is, you know, are starting to retire. But, you know, the first, you know, the very first time we got together, we met at my house and decided to form this organization, UTOPS. And it was me and Pam and Marilyn Greer and Marsha Miller, who was the first reader from Utah. And uh, she was at Brighton High School. And we just were talking about just what, what, what does this mean? What are we going to do? And from that came our first, you know, our first, um, you know, foray into workshops and, and so on. But, you know, we've had some turnover, but I think, you know, for Pam and I are probably the longest lasting, Pam. I think, you know, as, as you know, we've been to, been to just about all of them, haven't we? Keep yeah. the retirees in. Use them. Yeah, if they want to come. Oh, we're still here. <laughs> and, we're, and we're really lucky because Pam and Kristen don't age. I mean, they look like they're you know still that's right you know getting started first 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 year. Um, I've been kind of trying to figure out exactly how to word this without getting too much off on um, uh, congratulations, but I promise you this would not be. Uh, as strong and as institutionalized or financed or recognized without Kristen. And wow, and I, true. I give that all to her. I mean, wow. I, we all do all kinds of things. But the inspiration, the drive, the creativity, everything, yeah, yeah, and that's right, is Kristen. Yeah. Wow. I agree. Well, Pam, thank you. Thank er, you. Irv, when you uh, stepped away, because I'm guessing you retired, and so you stepped away from UTOPS a little bit, um, uh, did you feel like you were leaving it in capable hands that would carry it forward, or did you not know what was going to happen with it at that point? You mean TOPS? Yeah. Oh, I, there was no question in my mind that it was going to be productive and continuous because I, I knew who was, I knew about the meetings and I knew who was there. And I was even involved in one. Yeah. Many. I mean, I presented at one. I'm still using one of your activities on environmental cognition. Yeah, that's so, right. Know. I did a whole thing on yes, environmental perception and still using cognition it. and, I, and ter- the, the maps. Yes. Maps are great. Cognitive maps. Well, I'm going to need uh, <laughs> Kristen to tell me about it. <laughs> Bob. It's really fun. The kids love it. Yeah, but I, I would also argue that, you know, you can, that that's a great thing, but there are, I mean, if you look at its history, uh, TOPS is no longer at the University of Utah, its headquarters or home. So you, you can't really rest on your laurels. You have to stay dynamic. Just an idea, since we're brainstorming, is that one thing that TOPS might want to think about is a visual logo, a trademark or a hmm. logo that wow. you know people can wear on their T-shirts or it's a good they, idea uh, they, they can put up, and I think that would also add to its staying power. Have you thought about a logo, Kristen? Well, you know, we had a logo. We did when we were at the University of Utah. It was a U, the big red block U with a little apple in it. Oh, I uh-huh. that. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was on all of our yeah, our things. But you know, when we made the move. To Westminster, we just have yeah. not. And uh, I've thought about that, actually. I'm glad you brought it up, because I have thought good, about that. I, I think it's so actually really it important for, for branding yourself um, right. and for marketing. And I think people like 
like swag. And by the way, this is just my own bias. I think people like good swag. And so um, things that people will actually wear, will actually drink out of or whatever, if you can get, and, oh, and it's a, it becomes yeah. a reminder to them of their commitment to this tribe, this wonderful group of people. Um, um, so, you know, we have a little bit of time left and I know that there is so much more to say and we're just not going to have the chance to say it, but I did want to leave some space at the end because I know you all probably, I'm just going to guess, you have stories. You have stories over 20 some years that are kind of fun to tell about you tops. Um, and uh, if I'm wrong and this goes nowhere, I'll just edit it out. <laughs> but um, from from the beginning, from the uh, APA days to, uh, to you know, uh, I heard a story on the way here about Rick Seafeld coming and Kristen getting lost in traffic for an hour. That was pretty great. Um, no. <laughs> not maybe top specific, but um, yeah. It, does anything strike anybody? Uh, some fun times that you could... Some 13-year-old. A 13? Oh, well, I... Oh, Kristen's getting put on the well, spot by yes, Pam right now. Kind of, yeah. Well, yeah, t- yeah, I am. Well, 2006... Um, uh, David Thomas, Dr. David Thomas, Oklahoma State, came out to be our guest at UTOPS. And I was very, very pregnant, very pregnant at that time. And uh, so we, Pam told me that on the, way, um, on the way into the conference that she was ready. She had a tarp in her car, and she was ready just oh in case. God. So we, uh, we went through the entire day and then um, got, got finished. And that took me home. And so we got, we, we got in the car. We went out for Indian after. Yes, and we did. You, we ate Indian food we at this great restaurant. And I lived in Bountiful, and she lives in Bountiful. And so I, we, I gave her a ride home. And I said, you know, it's a girl. It's a girl. <laughs> and I've never had a feeling about someone else's baby before. But I was like, it's a girl. And she was like, no, it's not. And right before we got in the car, someone said, you're going to have this baby soon. Was it David? David. It was, I think it was David. Yeah. yeah I think it was David. And, and I dropped her off yes. at her house, said goodnight, and then I think it was just a couple of hours later. Well, you dropped me off about 9, maybe, 9.30. I think I was in the hospital by 10.30. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then I had, I had her at about 6.00. So she's our little Utops baby. So. That sweet little girl recognized Mama was really busy yeah, she and waited, waited so politely waited until it was all done. Politely. And I think that's, that's a good right. story. That is a good that story. That is a great story. Anybody else? Well, I just have a visual memory. Pam will probably relate to this, but it seemed like uh, one of the things that I remember is that you know Tops would turn the College of Education into like a publishing company with all those books. Oh, yeah, from the yeah, support from, so, you know, high school teachers, many of us, you know, lacking, lacking new books or new resources, and we've been so lucky over the years to have the support of so many different publishing companies that have provided resources for our, for our participants, so we're so thankful to them. So do you have long-term relationships with, uh, with publishers because Utops has been going on for so long? Yeah, with many, probably, the, you know, many of them, many mm-hmm. of them, you know, and, and probably some, you know, some that are very consistent every year, for example, like Worth Publishing. Yeah. I can't say enough good things about the support that they've given over the years. Yeah. You know, we've had many, many, I don't want to disparage anyone else, but boy, they just, you know, the call goes out and they are so supportive. <laughs> You know, that's that's a big deal because high school teachers do not get a lot of support from publishers, uh, mm-hmm. from what I hear. And um, and if I make a call to a publisher, they will send me whatever I want. And if my high school colleague uh, makes that same call, they will not get it. Well, I want to say, too, that, you know, over the years, even though we're at Westminster College now, the University of Utah faculty still support us. Um, one of our participants, Dan Rosanis, goes every year to the university and collects boxes of books from the faculty. Hmm. So books that they've received from publishers that they can't use or don't want, he boxes them up and brings them over to our conference and teachers can That's take wonderful. whatever they like from those Great. from those boxes. So, you know, we we are still continue to have their support to get those resources out to teachers. And while you guys are thinking about more stories, because I want to hear more stories myself, but um, let me just say that the other thing that high school teachers don't get a lot of is um, like teaching, like or like teaching journals. Um, so where I can go as a college teacher, I can go into 
uh, the internet at my institution and I can pull up a uh, PsycInfo database and get any of the teaching journals, the three major teaching journals. Um, high school teachers don't get access to that. And let me just make a plug for the Society for the Teaching of Psychology because they have uh, a quarterly journal called Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. And for 25 bucks a year, which just is not much, um, that gets sent to your door for 25 bucks a year, four journals a year. Uh, you know, I don't know how many how many studies are in each journal, but that's a great resource for teachers. High school. How teachers. about asking APA to sponsor or partially subsidize that for teachers? Yep. Well, and, on and a grant basis. That's a good idea. Why not? You may as well ask. I mean, that's what I'm yeah. learning from you, Herb. <laughs> yeah, delusional, delusional good, asking. That's right. <laughs> You know, you know, I, I went through the other day, and you know, uh, Annette and I were talking about. It. Annette created the first list just from memory this and trying wonderful. to recreate from the very first convention that we did in '97 until today. You know, just a list of all the people and who've been guests at our at our conference. And you know, after I went through and started looking through folders and trying to place everybody, I mean, I look at this list of people that have been here, and I just, I mean, when you ask for one memory, I'm not sure if I can come up with one. Because I, these are like some of the people that I consider just some of my dearest friends and people that I respect so much. And I've appreciated over the years them all being a part of this and being willing to sacrifice their time and to give of their professional knowledge and their energy and their enthusiasm. That I mean, I can't thank them enough, each and every one of them. I could go through and read all of them. I don't think I will. But it's just been an incredible experience you know, for, for me personally. You know, I've always kind of said that it's it's kind of a selfish thing for me to do UTOPS, you know, because it's like, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's great for the teachers, but it's the way I get my friends to come and see me in the state of Utah is I invite them to come to UTOPS, you know, and I, and I love, and I love as I look at every single one of them, I love them, and I'm so glad that they've been a part of this. Mm. I want to see this list while somebody else is talking. I want to have a look yeah, at this. I'll point out, Kristen, that at least in the psych department, Maybe more than half of the faculty are new and young and enthusiastic. Go talk to Bert Uccino. I know. I've got about, his name written. I've got it down. There'll be, there'll be some that are be delighted to come and willing to come and happy to come. I don't I'm have sure it. that's true in, in Ed yeah. Psych. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a whole new generation. Sure. Yeah. Like Kristen, I don't have a lot of specific memories other than the memory of her getting lost, but <laughs> which is a great story. Probably not pertinent here. But um, we, uh, the thing about this is, like, I, I didn't go to the reading, uh, but then after becoming part of UTOPS and going to the conferences, then, you know, Kristen and Pam said, hey, if you like this, you need to come to the reading. And so it creates an avenue, and now... We have, I think last year we had like 16 teachers from Utah. You guys had big representation from At Utah. the reading. Yeah. And it was big the year I started because there amazing. were several of us. But it's And it's going to get bigger. There are more people who are applying. And it's part of that networking and knowing what can I do to become a better teacher. And if UTOPS is the first step, the next step is, okay, now you've got to go to the reading. And so we help each other in that way it's really a kind of a big deal another thing to do and, and I tried this so often in the university is find young people who are motivated interesting and, and get give them responsibility or invite them to take it if they choose and so many will jump in yeah yeah it's a really good point um, you know we are bumping up against time is there <laughs> anything else anybody wants to share about uh, UTOPS before we get going um, that we haven't already talked about. Well, you know, I, I want to say, you know, again, thank you, you know, to Irv Altman and to Bob Hill for making this a reality. For the first phone call, you know, just calling somebody out of the blue and saying, will you be, you know, would you be willing to do something? And for making this opportunity even available in the first place. I can't thank, you know, can't thank Irv enough. And for, for Bob's support at the Ed Psych Department, because all of those things that are hard for, hard for oh, us to do God. to, you know, get invitations out and to handle, you know, all of the, the financial aspect and so on. And, and Glenda, who was your secretary for so many mm -hmm. years, how yep. she would just run all of it and order our sandwiches and do all these things for us. I mean, it was amazing, amazing support. And so I want to thank, of course, both of them for, 
you know, for making this a reality. Because when I think about how this has impacted teachers, um, oh, I'm going to get upset. I can't cry about this. But when I think about how it's impacted teachers, it's immeasurable. Yeah. It's absolutely immeasurable. Yeah. And I'm so thankful and for all the teachers that have been a part of it, all the people who have presented and been a part of this, and I look forward to a, a good future, whether it's, it's, it's our little core group that are running it or these new generation, because there are so many wonderful, excited teachers here that can move forward to this, you know, from yeah. here. Well, um, this has been really nice to just witness you all sitting down and talking about it. And um, I am passionate about uh, teaching, and I have seen what you've done at UTOPS, and I hope that it gets replicated all over the place. I also know that it takes um, these kind of magical relationships between uh, you know, folks at colleges and universities and high school teachers really coming together for the sake of students. And um, I know, I, I know what you're saying, Kristen. It it just it has affected so many students' lives. The fact that UTOPS happened, and not only these teachers who it's meant so much to, but also hundreds, thousands, and thousands of students in Utah. And so um, that's what we're really that's what we want to do with our that's discipline right. is is give it away to help people uh, and, and help people's lives and their communities and all those things that psychology does for them. So thank you all for uh, sitting down uh, and telling this story. And um, I think we will leave it there. Um, Irv, good luck. I know that you are, uh, you are moving soon uh, and you've been in you. You've been in this house that we're sitting in for 50 years yes, and not for much longer. So uh, good luck with everything. Uh, Bob, really nice to meet you. And the rest of you, I'll see you at the AP reading. So. And uh, UTOPS tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And we yeah, have UTOPS we to do tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs>